Hi, welcome back to the Story Bank at Stories at Work, a series where I curate stories from across the world that you can use in business. Let's start today's story. It is August 16th, 2008. The Beijing Olympics is on. Michael Phelps has already won six gold medal. Now he's on the quest for the record equaling seventh, the 100 meters butterfly. The record for the seven individual goals in a single Olympics was held for 36 years by Mark Spitz. The race starts and Michael Phelps is facing stiff competition from Milorad Kavic, a Serbian. As the race goes on, Michael is slightly falling behind. And then in the last lap, something miraculous happens. To Kavic at the 50. Well, he had a good, <laughs> he had a good rest, had 50, 24 hours rest, but Kavic is going like a, like a train. We're not sure if Phelps has got enough energy for this race, Andy. He's got to get a big turn here, but Kavic is taking it to him. Well, very, very tight indeed, and Phelps hasn't got the greatest turn either. Now, Phelps does come back in five. Phelps must be lying in about third or fourth position at the moment. Kavic still leading for Serbia. Is it going to be the seventh hurdle that he's going to fall at? He's coming back. He's coming back very strongly, Michael Phelps. Surely he can't do this from this space. Michael Phelps is coming back in five. Is he gonna go to Michael surges ahead and wins by one hundredth of the second. This is the closest finish in the history of the sport. In fact, so close that the Serbian team lodges a protest with the Olympic Committee. The Olympic Committee stops, does not give the result and starts looking at underwater footage shot at one ten thousandth of a second per frame. And then after evaluation declares Michael Phelps as the winner. Michael Phelps gets his seventh goal and equals the record set by Spids. And then, of course, next day goes on to win the eighth and breaks the record. This was an incredible achievement. But what makes it even more incredible is what happened 10 months earlier on the 20th of October 2007. Michael Phelps was on his way to practice and while getting onto his friend's car, he slipped on a patch of ice and broke his wrist. X-rays revealed a small crack and a short procedure later, a cast was put. With the cast in place, and with doctor's orders not to use it for the next couple of weeks, clearly practice was out of question. Initially, Phelps was devastated. He went and told his long-term coach, Bill Bauman, it's over, I'm finished. In fact, the media pundits started talking about whether Phelps will be able to win those seven gold medals that he was planning to. In fact, some of the headlines even read, there is no way he even will go to the Olympics. But very soon, Michael Phelps' natural competitive instinct took over. He went to the swimming pool. And while all his Olympic teammates were doing full laps, Michael Phelps took a kickboard and he used his kicks, his legs, to you know swim laps on and on in the swimming pool. All this kicking further strengthened Michael Phelps' kick, which it indeed was already a killer kick. It was almost like you know a fish growing more gills. And then it was this kick that really helped him win that, that race. Because when experts did a analysis of slow motion replays of the race, what they saw was in the last five meters of that 100 meter butterfly in Beijing, Millerad was dragging his legs while Michael Phelps used one kick to go and touch the wall by one hundredth of a second. And that made all the difference. What a powerful story. Where in business can you use this story? Well, I can think of three. First is that we will all face adversities, but how we deal with adversity is really going to decide what impact that adversity has. The second is very often what looks like big trouble might just be a blessing in disguise. And third, when you're telling winning teams to not rest on their laurels and keep trying to get even better because in the end, a small amount of difference can make a difference between success and failure. Where else do you think you can use this story? Do let me know in your comments what you think. I hope you liked that story. And if you did, head over to our YouTube channel where we have lots of stories, two huge playlists. One is the Leader Speak series where we've got leaders telling stories from their life that inspire us and we can use in business. And the other, the Story Bank series, where we've got stories like this one, which you can use in business. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.